And I praise God for being on the Lord's side. You know, this warfare that we're in, hallelujah, the, 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 the battle has already been won, but we got some skirmishes here. Over here we wrestle. I want you to understand one thing. The devil is no threat no more. Us letting the devil use us is the chief threat. Hallelujah. He used us before Jesus Christ came into our lives. He used us at will. And we thought it was us. But we were fulfilling like the Paul the Apostle through the Holy Ghost told us. We were fulfilling the desires of the flesh and the mind. And were by nature the children of wrath. But God who is rich in mercy. Boy, God stepped in, amen? And I praise God he stepped in in my lifetime. How many glad to be saved today? How many glad that the Spirit of God, amen, came down and that he read his residence is in us today? How, how many of y'all glad to be saved? How many of you glad to have the Lord inside of you? Hallelujah! You know what my joy is? That I'm never alone. Never alone. Sometimes the devil get in your flesh and think that it's just you. But praise God, I thank God for the presence of God. And I thank God for being, being able, amen, praise the Lord, not just to get in contact with him, but him laying his hands on me. And like C.D. Owen said, let me know I'm on the line. Amen. And I praise God for it. Reach over and get your Bibles today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters, the, the word of God today is sent to strengthen us. It's sent to make us understand who we are and the word of God is sent to bring out us back into remembrance that this thing has never ever been about us living by ourselves it's, it's always been about Jesus Christ living in us Colossians 1 26 Christ in us is the hope of glory reach over and get your Bibles turn with me please amen praise God to 2 Timothy chapter 2 amen praise the Lord we're going to begin reading, amen, praise God, at that first verse. Thou therefore, my son, be strong. Be what, church? Strong. Be strong in the grace. In what, church? That is, it, that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me, you've been taught by me. You've been trained by me. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men. Who shall be able to do what? To do what? To teach others. To teach others. Look this way, every one of you. That's been my only goal here since they sent me down here to pastor. Is to train you so that you won't have to go to try to go to heaven on the pastor's coattail. To train you to walk one-on-one, -on -one, hand in hand with Jesus Christ, so that when you bow your knee, amen, praise God, the devil trembles. Why? You got God in you. To bring you into the knowledge to know that you're not just a mere woman. You're not just a mere man. We're sons and daughters of God. And because we're sons and daughters of God, God promised, amen, praise God, that his ears would be open to our cry. And his eyes would be upon us. Hallelujah. I never pray. Like, well, I don't start no shotgun prayers of heaven. I pray specific and I pray for one thing and that is for God to have his way. And I have his will. And because I know what his will is, which is the word of God, I know that I'm praying in sync with him. Everybody repeat after me. The word, God's word, is God's mind. Say it again. God's word is God's mind. Let's read. Verse 3. That thou... Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And notice now, no soldier, no man that wore it entangled himself with the affairs of this life. Why? That he may please him who had chosen him. You're what? We're what? Talk to me like you're in here. We are what? He chose us to be a soldier. First Timothy chapter 1. Hallelujah. These are key scriptures, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. First Timothy chapter 1 and verse 18. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, 
that thou by them might wash a good warfare. Now, that's a semicolon there, which means he's going to explain what a good warfare is. The next verse, holding faith. Holding what? Holding faith, number one, and a good conscience. A good conscience toward God is how to, we, we keep the devil from planting thoughts in our mind of doubt and foolishness. He always comes with doubt. He always tried to get us to doubt God's word. Amen now. And the only way he can do that is when we're walking in our flesh. When we're looking at things through, a, through the natural eyes. And when the enemy can get us to look at things through the natural eyes, then we just deny God being God. Why? If God is God and he made everything, he controls everything, he do what he want to. And the Bible declares him and the things that are in Possible with man or possible with God. And then Jesus Christ told us. He said, praise God, you do what I tell you to do. And nothing shall be impossible for you. I'm going to talk about a good soldier, Jesus Christ, this morning. I don't preach no subject. I pre I'm preaching the word. And I'm coming from that second Timothy, amen, where he, where he told that man, and what go for him, go for us. Because all of us is in the same warfare. Y'all look this way here. Ain't a different Holy Ghost that, that he gave us than him. He didn't give us a different Holy Ghost. And, and ain't no different devil that we're dealing with other than what these men dealt with. And, and praise God. So we know that in this warfare, we got the same thing. We got the same goal in mind to make heaven. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm, I'm living to, learn, to leave him. Sure enough. And I want to leave him in peace. And I want to behold his face in peace. A good warfare, brothers and sisters. A good warfare. Now, in order for me to war a good warfare, I got to understand that it's always been a battle of the will. What you will and you won't do. And your will is, is few by whatever kind of mind you got. Sure enough. Hallelujah. Now, let me show you something here. Because through the Holy Ghost, God taught Paul Amen. Pray God the difference between the flesh and the spirit. Walking in the flesh and walking in the spirit. And by God giving this man the insight, thank God he put it down. Amen now. In Romans chapter 7, amen, jot it down. We're not going to go there. But he said that, praise God, I never knew what was going on, amen, until uh, the law. The law came. When the law came, I died. He said, and I, it, it dawned on me through the Holy Ghost that there was a war going on in my members. And the things that I want to do, I don't do. And the things that I don't need to be doing, that's what I find myself doing. Ah, but that last verse in there, he said, who shall deliver me from the power of this death? He said, I thank God through Jesus Christ. Now, when we read that seventh chapter, he says, in me, that is, in my flesh. He put a check and a distinction between him, the spirit man, and the flesh, the carnal man. In other words, in Ephesians chapter 4, he talks about that old man and the new man. Ephesians 4, 19. Amen. Praise the Lord. He said, put off the old man and his deeds and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and then put on this new man. Why well, bless his name? We become new according to salvation. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away and behold, all things have become new. Thank you, Holy Ghost. But look, look, to me, look at me, y'all. Look this way here. I thank God that this thing ain't a man thing. I thank God that it's not determined by your position in life, what you got. I thank God it ain't determined by the color of your skin, your race. Uh, amen now. Uh, in, uh, in the book of Galatians, he had to straighten them out. He told them in Galatians 3.26, he said, pray God, we are all children of God. And then you read on down through in that 28 verse. He said, pray God, in him that's neither Jew nor Greek. That's neither bond nor free. That's neither male or female. All of us is in this thing together. All of us is on the front line. Now, God brought to my mind that nowhere, nowhere in the U.S. forces do they send you anywhere to do a war without training you. What do you think I'm here for? He trained me. I'm training you to be warrior, but not just any warrior, but good warriors, faithful warriors, amen? Good soldiers in the armor of the Lord. Good saints, amen? Why? Because he that leading us, 
He is all about good. He's all about righteousness. He's all about light. You believe it? Say amen. Hallelujah. I can't, I, I can't, amen. I'm going to do just what you told me to do and just set it down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a battle of the will, and that will is formulated by the mind. So a man thinking his heart, so is he. Amen. And that mind, God, when he made us new, when we got saved, he gave us a new mind. Show sure enough. In, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, he talks about the, the natural man. In 1 Corinthians 2, 14, he said the natural man cannot receive the things of the Lord. Why? They're foolishness to him. Y'all look this way here. Ain't it foolish by the world standing for us to believe in a man that came over 2,000 years ago and died? And what's even more crazy is he got up. The mentality of the world is death is foul, but not so beloved. Well, glory to God, when he walked on the face of this earth, pray God, he proved that he had power over death. Lazarus was dead four days. The man was stinking. Ah, but God, amen, David, knowing who God, like he knew God and knowing that he is God, amen, praise God. He stepped over the scene, praise God, and all he did was call. Somebody say he called three times when the preacher started lying and preaching. He called the man one time. Why, John 5 and 28, the day is coming and now is when the dead and Christ, dead going to hear the voice of the Son of God and come forth. Well, praise God, he let Lazarus die and called him back, didn't he? And Joe, enough, amen, he got the power to call a man back from death. He got the power to get up from death. Why well, bless his name? Thank you, Lord. When he saved us, he gave us his mind. In 1 Corinthians 2.14, he said, A natural man receiveth not the things of the Lord. They're foolish to him, and he can't even know them. Why? They're spiritually discerned. But in 1 Corinthians 2.16, look at that, y'all. He said, who has known the mind of the Lord that they may instruct him? Somebody answer that question. Somebody answer that question. Who, is, who can tell God what to do? Who can teach God what to do? Well, then he tell us, amen, you have, we have the mind of Christ. Now, what kind of mind did Jesus Christ have? I want Philippians 2. Philippians 2, praise God, the Bible declares a hallelujah that Jesus Christ being the example. Hallelujah, y'all there. Philippians 2 and verse 2. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Notice what he said. Verse 2. Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Of what? One court and one mind. He's talking to the church. Hey, these folks, they're not Jews, y'all. Let, let's get that now. Anytime you read these epistles, Romans, Philippians, Corinth, they are not Jews. They, are, they were idol worshipers. Not even came on the Lord's side, so the Holy Ghost, I thank God for this man. I was reading in Galatians, he had to straighten them out. So sure enough. In the book of God, when he talked to the Galatians, he said, when God saved me on the Damascus road, I did not confer with flesh and blood. I didn't go up to Jerusalem and be taught of them disciples. He said, pray God, I went into Arabia. And pray God, that's what he gave me the revelations I got. And when I came out of Arabia, amen, I went back to Damascus where he saved me. And I stayed there three years. And after that, I did, I went up to Jerusalem. And I didn't see nobody but Peter and James, the Lord's brother. But he stayed 15 days telling them what God had done through him. Why bless his name? And so he telling us, these Philippians, amen, bride, this is how you live now. However you live before you got saved, there's a new way today. It's called the way of love. Get out of your flesh. Think about somebody other than yourself. That's what he taught. That's what the Lord taught. That's what the disciples taught. Think on up. Let's read. Let's read. Verse 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. But in what? Lowness of mind, let each one of us esteem other better than themselves. How many of y'all there? Talk to me, somebody. If you're not there and I'm not there, we, need, we got some work ahead of us. Amen? If we're not there, and this is what he told us in the scriptures to do, I think we playing catch up. I believe we playing catch up. And I believe we better get right here before Jesus comes. Let's read. 
Let's read. Verse 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others, on the plight of others, on the saints that are struggling. He's talking about saints now. He's talking about how we treat the saints now. Amen now. Hallelujah. Let's read. Let this mind be in you. Now notice that word let. It means you have the power in your human will to do this. No more excuses. No more excuses. Last time I stood before you, I said, I'm tired. I know God tired. We talk about what we need to do. If it's him to know to do good and don't do it, it's sin. And if you know what God has commanded us and we don't do it and I don't do it, let me talk about me. And I don't do that, I'm in sin. I cannot expect God to answer one prayer. But what I can expect, amen, is because I'm in full knowledge of what I need to do, I'm looking for judgment. And I ain't got a legal right to get mad when he begin to chase me. Him chasing me, pray, I mean he loved me. If he didn't, he'd let me go out in the judgment. Show no as a professing believer. Let's read. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now, what kind of mind did the Lord have? Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbing to be equal with God, very God in the flesh. Verse 7, but made himself of no reputation. How many there? How many there? We're talking about the example now of the saints. We're talking about being a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You got to follow Jesus Christ in order to be a good soldier of Jesus Christ. He laid down the pattern and he told us in 1 Peter 2.21 to follow in his steps. Let's read. Who And being in... Verse, verse 7, but made himself of no reputation and took on him the form of a servant and was made like in the likeness of men. God didn't sin. Man sinned. So he came as a man to deliver us. Let's read. And being found in fashion as a man. What did he do? He humbled himself and became obedient. He what? He became obedient. God gave me this coming down here. Y'all, y'all wrestle with it. Y'all wrestle with it. Now, when he came up out at the baptism of John, when he came up out of the water, the Holy Ghost, John the Baptist in Matthew chapter 5 said God didn't give him the spirit with measure. We get it in the Holy Ghost in a measure. But he was a wall of all Holy Ghost. And when he came up out that water, God led, the spirit of God led him into the wilderness the wilderness always mean a barren place. Many of us, when we start going through our trials, we're in the wilderness, but ah, we ain't by ourselves. Thank you, Lord. He was tempted for 40 days and 40 nights in the Bible declares he ate nothing. He ate nothing. Now that's going to lead us into this first step that must be resident in our lives. It's called fasting. So enough. Fasting is what's going to bring that, that natural man, keep him down. Fasting is what's going to bring that natural man under subjection, huh? 1 Corinthians 9 and 27, Paul the apostle said, I, the spirit man, keep under my body. My what? My body. Lest when I, the spirit man, begin to preach to others, I, myself, become a castaway. What does that mean, a castaway? It means that I'm, in the, I'm bound in my flesh. While I'm preaching. Huh? In order for me to war good warfare, in order for me to be a good soldier, I'm going to have to bring my flesh under. What, what is the flesh? Galatians chapter 5. Somebody get that for me. I, I believe I'll let our, my readers read a little bit. Hallelujah. In Galatians chapter 5 and verse 19, jot it down. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters, I want Galatians 5 and verse 19. Somebody, anybody, quickly, 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 read. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Now what is the works of the flesh? Now y'all look this way here. Fasting will bring this under control. That's the only thing right there that's going to bring it under control. Fasting. Putting that plate over. Our appetite get us in trouble. And I ain't just talking about food either. Now I'm going to say this. Y'all might not take it. But our help would be better if we. Hallelujah. We watch what we eat. 
We ain't under no law now, but God gave Israel a diet, and, Israel, and that diet, amen, kept them healthy while they was in the wilderness. And sure enough, when God brought them out of Egypt, brother John, that was not one feeble one among them, but to keep them from being feeble, amen, he gave them a diet. Oh, y'all going away from him. Hallelujah. That's the same thing I just don't eat. Hallelujah. I want you to pray for my blood pressure. Quit eating all that hog meat. Y'all ain't talking to me. In order to be a good soul, y'all have to, amen, temper this body and make this body obey my spirit. Why God is living off in here. I ain't, in the, I ain't just in here by myself. Through the Holy Ghost, he tells me what I need to do. He tells me what I don't need to do. Why bless his name? Let's read, brothers and sisters, verse 8. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, wherefore God hath highly exalted him and given him a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow things in heaven, things in earth, and things on earth. Okay? Now I won't, amen, pray your Galatians. Come on, son. The works of the flesh are these three. The works of the flesh. The works of the flesh are manifest, which are deeds, adultery, Read. fornication, Read. uncleanness, Read. lasciviousness. Now, uncleanness, you can put sodomy, lesbianism, and anything else in there that's a contrary to sound doctrine. Read it. Idolatry. Idolatry. Witchcraft. Witchcraft. Hatred. Now, notice now, what works are these? Now, listen, brothers and sisters. If I ask you a question, talk to me like you know I'm talking to you. Read it. Witchcraft. Witchcraft. Hatred. Hatred. Variant. Variant. Emulations. Read. Wrath. Read. Strife. Read. Now you know what you're going to do you good. It's not just to read about these things, but go aim and get you a Bible dictionary and find out what these things mean. Because you could be doing this and not even be aware of it. Amen. And that's going to hinder your walk with the Lord. And you cannot be an effective warrior or an effective soldier when the flesh is ruling you. When God made us, we are eternal spirit. We have a soul and we live in a body. I told you that what, amen, prayer, your will is involved, but the catalyst for your will is your mind. And we're reading about the mind of Christ and what's coming against the mind of Christ. Read it. Heresy. Read. Envying. Read. Murder. Read. Drunkenness. Read. Revelings. And such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past. In time past. That they which do such things. Shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Drop down that 22nd verse. But the fruit of the spirit. Notice now the only way to combat this. The fruit of the spirit has got to be resonant in our lives as believing saints. As warriors, as good soldiers. We're going to have to have let, we're gonna have to let this mind that God put in us. Begin to operate. You know what that means? You're going to have to become unlearned. All that you thought you knew. You get unlearned and then you let God's Holy Ghost teach you this book here. Sure enough. And then teaching you is one thing. You obeying is another. Therefore your will got to kick in. The fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. Love. Joy. Joy. Peace. Notice the first one on the list now. Notice the first one on the list now. Read it. Love, long, joy, peace. Long suffering. Long suffering. Look Infinite. out now. Look out now. Look out how many are there. How many are there? How many are there? Read, son. Gentleness. You Re know what you ought to do if you got your Bible? Wherever you are not, you put a check behind that because God is showing us where we fall short at. Amen. You know they're not doing something about it. That's a whole new ball game. I want y'all to pray that I be the son or the daughter that God is looking for. No, you obey this Bible here. This word will make you what God wants you to be. Repeat one more time after me. God's word is God's mind. That's the mind of Christ. Read, son. Gentleness. Gentleness. Goodness. Goodness. Faith, meekness. Temperance. Lord, have mercy against such there is no law. There is no law. Read, son. And they that are, are Christ. They that are Christ have crucified. Crucified. Cru they did what? Crucified. They the crucified. Christ. Now, Paul told 
in Galatians over in 2.20. Galatians 2.20, I'm crucified with Christ every day. I bring my flesh under. I control this body here. Nobody else. Hallelujah. No outside entity controls me. Jesus Christ from the inside, he directs me to stand against the flesh so that the spirit man shall rule. Remember now, remember when he created us, when we got saved, he put us back in line like Adam was at, fo at first where we can con communicate spirit to spirit. God didn't come down out of heaven to talk to that man. The spirit of the Lord came down and that man was in tune with God. Hallelujah. If you can receive it, God ain't never left the throne. <laughs> he always sent Jesus. Amen. Now, come on, read that book. Read it, read it, read it. Against such there is no law. Amen. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh. With the affections and lust. With notice the underline that affections and lust. Affections and lust. I'm gonna put that on a marriage day with Chef right here, brothers and sisters. We go, it's coming up again. The lust. But that affections is what we got to worry about. What you desire, what you want, what you want to be. Your affections, the things that you put, you spend your time and trying to, to to acquire. Amen. Now, now notice now. Let's go on back to Philippians two. Let's pick it up. Praise God. In the 10th verse, that, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in, of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue shall con should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. But notice verse 12. Notice verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed. I'm in Philippians 2 and verse 12. You've always obeyed, not in my presence only, but much more in my absence. Work out. Do what? Do what, church? Work out. Well, we ain't supposed to do nothing. We read something different here. Work out your own salvation with what? Now, notice, brothers and sisters. Notice now that word, those two words, fear and trembling, ain't in there to hold the pages up. We ain't supposed to be afraid of God. I'll tell you what. Something wrong with you upstairs. Hallelujah. We reverence God, but pray God, we ought to be afraid to sin against God. Hallelujah. Why? We got a whole lot of history, not just Bible, but history of men and women that rejected God, and God judged them in their lifetime. And when God judged them, he made an open show of it. Show sure enough, this thing wasn't done in no corner. Let's read, brothers and sisters. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but it not now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Why? For it is God that's working in us, both to will and to do of what? Whose good pleasure? Whose good pleasure? It's him working in me. Okay, him working in me equips me to put the devil down to shut the door. Somebody say shut the door. To shut the door to every avenue he got to come out and come against me. He can only come through the flesh. I've been training, you've been trained from a child to follow the flesh. That's why when we got born again, the spirit man was put right back in, in concert with God. What God speaks to the spirit and that spirit is going to guard the soul. And then that spirit and that soul is going to make your flesh do right. Hallelujah. By God. Show sure enough. Let's read, brothers and sisters. Do all things without murmuring and complaining. Why? Verse 15, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God. The what, church? Without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom we do what? We shine as lights in the world. That word world means the darkness. The darkness needs light. We shine as light in the midst of darkness. Look out, amen, First John. First John 5 and 19, he said, pray God, brother, we know we of God and the whole world lies in wickedness. Let's read, brothers and sisters. Verse 16, Philippians 2, 16, holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Now, in 1 Peter chapter 4, Jesus Christ crucified his flesh and he says that for, for, for as much then as Christ has suffered for us. He did what? First Peter 4 and verse 1. As Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, 
arm yourself likewise. Listen, brothers and sisters. Listen now. The flesh got a voice. You'll never know it until you begin to fast, let's say, more than one day. A show sure enough. You know what? That, that, that voice begin to cry out. I, I need to eat a little something. Hallelujah. I need to eat a little something. That voice cries out. And then all, and you can hear the devil clear, but you can hear God even more clear. And if you're rooted and grounded in God's word, then you know the difference between the two. Who's talking to you? Hallelujah. Why? The devil is a deceiver. He'll come so sadly with something that look like it ought to be God. But the Holy you'll feel a check in your spirit. Paul, amen. John the Apostle calls it an unction. Well, bless his name. Hallelujah. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself likewise with the same what? With the same what? With the same mind. He put his flesh down. We put our flesh down. Y'all look this way here. You remember now, remember, he brought his flesh on in the wilderness, didn't he not? Didn't he not? All right, that flesh didn't start acting up until he got in the garden of Gethsemane. Show sure enough. Show sure enough now. Hallelujah. And he prayed. He knew what he came to do, Sister Jessica. He knew what he came into this world to do. But pray God, he began to pray against the will of God. He said, Lord, look at here now. I ain't did nothing wrong. I don't want to drink that cup. What was in that cup is the sin of every human being that ever lived and all of us that's living now and everybody that's going to live for him until Jesus come. He's been clean from the, from the get-go. He's pure from the get-go. 1 Peter chapter 2, the Bible declared, 1 Peter 2, 21, God made him to be our sin that we may be made the righteousness of God in him. He didn't, amen, he didn't sin against God. We sinned against God. Man sinned against God. Hallelujah. And the flesh didn't act up until he got in the garden of Gethsemane. But thank God for the spirit. You know when he came to the boys and they were asleep, he told them that the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. Brothers and sisters, the, the, the spirit and the flesh are always at war. Hallelujah. But then he had another, the less back there. Hallelujah. Look this way, every one of you. We got to have that same nevertheless. And the only way we're going to get there, we're going to have to be saved and living for God and understand that we're in a warfare. I'm going to deal with the nature of this warfare in a minute. But praise God, in Romans chapter 8, I want Romans 8 and verse 5. I want that right now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We remember, remember now we read in Galatians 5 about the works of the flesh. But Romans 8 and 5, the Bible declared. Give, give, give me Romans 8. Yeah, 8 and 5. 8 and 5. Read. But they that are after the flesh. They that are after the flesh. Do mind the things they of the do flesh. what? Now there's that mind again. There's that mind again. Y'all look this way here. What we're reading is scriptures that you either heard preached out of this pulpit or you studied. And sometimes we can read or, or hear some soul until we become callous. And we don't pay attention to the importance of what we're reading. Every jot and tittle is important for us. Why? It's going to take that, amen, prayer to get us where Jesus Christ is. Hallelujah. Read. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. They do what? But they that, that are, are after, after the spirit, spirit, they mind the things of the Spirit. Read. For to be carnal minded is death. That is now. That is. The, dangerous, the most dangerous person in God's house is the carnal minded Christian. You know why? Because the devil, I mean, knock them back and forth, and they wonder why they can't go forward in God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They want, and they, they're the one trying to ride to heaven on the pastor's coattail. You can't have no pastor salvation. Hear God, not me. Hear God. You, your, get, your faith got to be in Jesus Christ and him alone. And the only way your faith is going to be tried, amen, praise God, is you got to get in the mix. And you got to grow up before you get there. And what you doing with your, your, your what you call spare time makes a difference. Sometimes, you know, I, I, Pastor Douglas get discouraged sometimes. One of those times was on this week, this last week. Hallelujah. And then, praise God, I, I pull out the message about being ready. Hallelujah. And, and, and watch night service in 2011, coming into 2011. 
a message about being ready. And praise God, I put all of the series of messages on one DVD. And I begin to listen from one to the other. And I begin to get encouraged, amen, praise God, about being ready when Jesus Christ come. Amen. And as I begin to listen and read, praise God, I, I, I stayed up just about all night to put them on, on the website. I say, praise God, that's, that, that is uh, uh, necessary because in the last day, saints need to be confronted with the truth concerning Jesus coming, how you better be when he get him. How you better be living, how you better, well, amen now, how you better be acting. Hey, we still, hey, the, the book of Acts is being written, still written. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Read, daughter. But to be spiritual, man, is life and peace. Now, he's dealing with not just life over here, but eternal life. Read, daughter. Because the carnal mind is the image against the, the God. The carnal mind is what, church? It's hostile against God. Read. That, hey, that we is in first in the first Corinthians two fourteen now. That natural man, huh? The carnal mind, the natural man. But here, he's not dealing with just any kind of man. He's talking about somebody that's been exposed to Jesus Christ, that came to Jesus Christ, and no, don't want to grow up. Don't want to grow up. Read, daughter. For it is not subject to the law of God. Neither. Now, notice Neither. not not subject. Not subject. I'm not going to obey God off in God's house. Who, who is he talking to? Who is he talking to? He ain't talking to the Corinthians. He ain't talking to the Galatians. He ain't talking about talking to these carnal-minded Romans who at one point worshipped the Caesars. Hallelujah. But now that you came over here, sure enough, you can't worship like you worship that dog. No, sir. Amen. We don't participate in the things of the world. Well, bless his name. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You ladies listen. No reflection on the lady, but y'all listen to Pastor Douglas. Y'all listen to Pastor Douglas. Don't let the devil use you. Amen. Now, nah. you know, saints get to the point where they don't see nothing wrong with the fashions of the world, so they buy that junk and bring it off in God's house. You ladies cover your bosom up. Y'all with me this morning? Well, Pastor, I done bought dresses with a V-cut. Amen. When you put a blouse up under that thing. Hallelujah. I don't want to see your bosom. And don't you let the devil use you. Hallelujah. We, we ain't showing off of what we got. Hallelujah. Y'all ain't got to take it, but all these wicked hairdos that these fellas and girls got now. My God, sometime I see for I want to walk up to them and say, hey, go somewhere and comb your hair. Hallelujah, we don't wear earrings. Oh, my God. Why, why don't you get on there? Because it's off in the flesh. The fashions of the world do not belong in God's house. We ain't got no business following the world no how. It's right in here. It's right in here. Read, daughter. Neither in these can be. Read. Tell so them what verse you at. They. Read. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Hold it. What did you say? So then, they that are in the flesh cannot, cannot please can, God. Hold it. Cannot. That's the operative word. Please God. Now, you don't please him. You not, don't, don't belong with him. Even though you may wear his name, you don't belong to him. And when he comes, you're not going. Until you get in the posture of pleasing him in your everyday life, we not going. I say, we not going. Amen. Hallelujah. Drop down to that ninth verse, daughter. But ye are not in the flesh, Read. but in the spirit. Read. If so, be that the spirit of God dwells in you. The spirit of who? God. All right, give me the 13th verse. Pick but, it up right there. Read. For if you live after the flesh. If you live after the flesh. Ye shall die. We're in Romans 8 and verse 13. Give me that one more time. For if you live after if the flesh. If I live after the flesh. If you walk after your carnal mind. Ye shall die. Y'all look this way here. When he saved us, he put that fella down. The only way he can get back up. You got to let him up. The word of God tells us, Peter told us, be sober, be vigilant for our adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion is walking about seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in the faith. And then he talks about giving him no place. Read, daughter. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the That's what I want right there. Only through the Holy Ghost, only through obeying the Holy Ghost. Look this way here. Only through my spirit surrendering to God's spirit living in me. Can I put the flesh down and keep him down? Why? If he's between me and God, get what? Hallelujah. 
and I know it and don't do nothing about it. Read, daughter. But if ye through the Spirit do modify the deeds of the body, you Re shall live. Give me that 14th verse. Read. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they, they are the sons of God. They are the sons of God. They are who? Sons of God. Now notice, look this way here. He never left us without power. Not one time. Luke 10 and 19, behold, I give you power over all of the power of the devil. You know when he sent them out two by two, they came back and said, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through your name. Whose name is on us? Jesus. Who do we belong to? Jesus. Who did he command us to pray? What name did he command us to pray to the Father in? Jesus. Hallelujah. So what went for them, the devil, he tried to sell them whoop tickets and put up smoke. You ain't got the power to cast me out. No, I don't. But Jesus Christ in me do. Hallelujah. Therefore, my prayer, my prayer, it is in the God's heaven. And they know they better obey. Why? God ain't going to come down and say, hey, him and us is all of the backing that we need. Well, blessed day, one more time, church, God's word, God's word. is God's mind. And that mind begins to operate in me, especially when I come up on testing and trials. That's when I come into them rough places where the devil's trying to see that boy. You didn't have all this hell before you got saved. Hallelujah. All of the things. Look at what's happening to you. Where's your God now? He's right in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's right in here. Hallelujah. And when I pray, amen, when, 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 you know, if you squeeze something long enough, whatever's in there, come out, won't it? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Trials got a way of squeezing what's really in us. Or should I say who is really in us? Let's read, brothers and sisters. He gave us power over all of the power of the enemy. And praise God. Now, second wrench in the 10th chapter, this power is operated by fasting and praying. That's the next thing. And then obeying God's word. Now, fasting is the thing because it's going to bring that flesh under subjection to God's word. In the book of 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4, he begins to name, the, give us the, amen, praise God, the insight concerning the weapons that we're using in this warfare. The weapons of our warfare are not calling Now, you that's trouble in your mind. You get this verse and you stay right there until God gives you peace. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God. Through who? To the what? Pulling down. Now is there a stronghold that God can't break? Y'all talk to me. Is there anything that God can't overcome? To the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imagination. Now, ain't that what got them folks in Genesis 6 in trouble? Every imagination would do wicked. Well, we're in that time now, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. But pulling down, and casting down imagination in every high thing. Now, when they say high thing, it's talking about the devils that's in the atmosphere. Way man. That exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. Everything. Amen. And bring it into captivity. Every what? Every what? To the obedience of of Jesus Christ. All right, let's look at the nature of what we're dealing with. In Ephesians 6 and 10, he says, finally, my uh, brethren, y'all get there. I'm going to preach on while you read. Hallelujah. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. All right, y'all ask me one more time. What is God's might? What is God's power? God's word. Amen. Hallelujah. God's word is his mind. His mind is his power. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. The what church? Now I want you to understand when we get over in Ephesians here, he's dealing with your prayer life. He's dealing with your walk with God. He's dealing with your, 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 your devotion to honor him no matter what. No matter what the obstacle is, no matter what the foe is, ain't, ain't nobody bigger than God. And my God through Jesus Christ, ain't nobody bigger than us. Wake up here. Wake up. I don't want to be no soldier. My goal is to be a good soldier of Jesus Christ. 
Hallelujah. And on the battlefield, on the battlefield, that you got a, a, a commander. It, sometimes it's a captain or a lieutenant. And a real captain and a lieutenant have been trained in West Point not to send the men out ahead of him. He goes before his men. Why well, bless his name? Y'all get it? Y'all get it? Hallelujah. He's always before us. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, he always is on the battlefield with us. Why? To empower us to overcome. Hallelujah. Let, let, let's read. Let's read. For we wrestle, put on the whole arm, Ephesians 6 and 11. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, notice that word wiles. That word wiles means schemes and tricks. Hallelujah. That trick or treat don't last night. All, uh, all over the United States. And you got church folks participating. Enough said. Notice what he says here. For we wrestle not. Notice. Notice. This warfare we got to wrestle. Look this way here. But we ain't got to wrestle with what we're reading here. We got to wrestle with these things using us against ourselves. Y'all, please understand. Get this. Get this. The devil can't whoop us. He never has had the ability to whoop us since Jesus Christ came. He got to use us against ourselves. Ain't that what the Lord told Peter in Luke 22, 31? The devil has asked for you, Peter, that he may sift you as wheat. He asked for you. Hallelujah. But now when you get converted, he was saved, but he wasn't converted. A lot of us are saved, but we ain't converted. Which means changing over from the way we thought before Jesus saved us to the way he thinks. To quit operating in our flesh, our mind, and begin to operate in the truth. Let's read, brothers and sisters, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world. Of what world? Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God. That you may be able to withstand in the what day? Talk to me somebody. What day? Are we not in the evil day now? The evil day means the last days when the devil is putting on his greatest drive of deception. Let's read. That you may, wherefore take unto you the whole arm of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore. All right, let's read. Stand therefore, having your Lord's girdle about with the truth of God's word and the truth of who Jesus Christ is and the truth of who you are in him. Let's read. And having on the breastplate of righteousness and through Jesus Christ, we've been made right with God. Remember that now. Remember that. Let's read. And your feet sharp with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We carry the peace to those that are hurting, we carry the peace of God to those that need peace by bringing them Jesus Christ. Let's read, brothers and sisters. And above all, taking the shield of faith, where we, you shall be able, you shall what? Be able to quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked. There's my confirmation now. He ain't got nothing that God, God the faith in God won't, won't help me to overcome. He ain't got nothing in his arsenal that can defeat us as long as we're living by faith, walking by faith, obeying God's word. Amen. He can't whoop us. Get that now. We on the battlefield. We in a skirmish. We in a wrestling match. Praise God. But God put us on the top. If he pin you down, cause you let him. Amen. Now, let's read, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all of the fiery dots of the wicked and take the heaven of salvation where I know I'm saved as good as I know my name. So he can't, he can't, ain't that what he used when you first get saved? He's telling you you ain't saved. All right, you got to overcome that obstacle. That's the first obstacle. Let's read, brothers and sisters. And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, doing what? See there? This is our prayer. This is how we, we, we equipped ourselves as good soldiers to pray. Why? The battle is won or lost when we begin to, when we bow our knees, all the hell trembles. Sure enough now. I know we pray in church, uh, amen, standing up. 
But when I bow my knee, pray God, it's on like neck bones, Marcus. Hallelujah. I'm amen. Pray God like a bulldog, amen, on a raw piece of meat. I'm going for something, and I'm not going to let up and turn it loose until I see God move on my behalf. Well, bless his name. Praying always. And ain't we supposed to always pray and not faint? Luke 18 and 1. Let's read, brothers and sisters. With all prayer. Notice now, again, he's talking about prayer. Let's read. And supplication in the spirit. And watching down to with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. How's your prayer life? How's your prayer life? Hallelujah. If I'm not there, I put checks everywhere I see where I fall. And I, amen, I, I, I made it my business, amen, because I don't know when the Lord Jesus Christ is coming for his church. I made it my business to handle up. I ain't waiting till tomorrow. I'm doing it now. I'm not going to wait, amen, to a, to a convenient time. I'm doing it now. Why? Amen, praise God. I think so much about death. Y'all ain't got to take this. But I've come to grips with the fact that I may not be on this side when Jesus comes. Physically, the body. But praise God, when I draw my last breath, wherever I draw my last breath, I'll be in his presence then. Hey, the real me, the real me now, I'll be in his presence then. Hallelujah. And praise God. Let's read, brothers and sisters. Let's, let's move on. Second Corinthians, amen, the fourth chapter. Paul, the apostle, he reveals to us again about the nature of this warfare. And, y and this is, amen, to all of the saints, but primarily to me and Minister Marcus and, 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 and missionary, my wife, and all those that bring God's word. That handles God's word. Amen. I want that right now. First, second Timothy 4 and verse 1. Somebody, anybody, read. Therefore, seeing we let I read. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of what? Manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Why? But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world, and that word world is translated age. We're in 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 4. For in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not. Lest the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your what? Is anybody read with me? Ourselves, your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. For we have this treasure in earth and vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of, of us. All right, y'all read with me this morning. Read with me, please. Because we're getting ready to, to, to understand what it literally means to be a good soldier in this fight. When we are confronted by the devil, amen, praise the Lord, we, like saints that came before us, they had, they had to have that mind of Christ operating in them in order to persevere right here. Let's read verse 8. we are trouble on every side. Yet, everybody say yet. Yet not distressed. We, we don't get stressed out. Because we got, a, got some trouble, amen. We expect it, amen. We're perplexed, but not in despair. We, amen. We ain't throwing up our hands like there's no hope. Let's read. Verse 9. Persecuted, but not forsaken. He ain't going to turn his back on us. He's in this persecution with us. Cast down, but not destroyed. Amen. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our what? Manifest in our what, church? Look, that, look this way here. Manifest in our bodies mean that Holy Ghost in us. It was give us the power to endure what we just read here. Hallelujah. When we're cast down, amen, we know it ain't over till, it, till he says it's over. We ain't in distress. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's read. Come on. Come on. First Timothy 6 and 12. Because we understand this, he says for us to fight. The good fight of faith. I tell you what, First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 11. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness. Follow after godliness. Follow after faith. We in First Timothy 6 and verse 11. Follow after faith. Follow after love. Follow after patience.
patience. Now, in, in, in Luke 21, 19, he said, patience, I have to possess my soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's read. In meekness. Then he tell us, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Where to thou call? We're called to what? We're called to eternal life. Let's read. And that's profess a good profession before many. Before what? Before many witnesses. Now I know with this plague going on, a lot of us scared to talk to people. Amen. Praise God. But I tell you what, y'all look this way. I thought about this this morning. When this thing broke out in March, amen, I was going in and out, in and out. You know why? Because I understand the power of the blood. And then round about May, Governor Edwards came on the, the, the amen, the conference line. Hallelujah. And he told us, amen, pray God he was given a mandate, you know, when he shut everything down. And then if you go out, wear a mask. And then what drew me to obey that man was that he said, if you don't think about yourself, think about your neighbor. I said, okay, I can get with that. Hallelujah, just because I got faith that the devil can't hoodwink me and that I'm saved and that no plague is going to come nigh me. But yet my brother, the men and women I felt. So I, I obeyed. I got the people here to prove it, but especially my wife now. I just go in and out. That ain't going to cost you nothing. But what I'm trying to get you to see, praise God, we, we got God in us. And because God is in us, we have a mandate as good soldiers, good warriors, to order to pray and seek God to intercede. First Peter 2 and verse 9. He calls us a royal, a royal priest, a chosen generation. First Peter 2 9. Turn with me, please. Hallelujah. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who has called us out of what? Out of darkness into his marvelous light which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God. Hallelujah. 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 I was a nobody. Then he saved me and made me somebody. I'm in God's family. I ain't the son of God. I'm a son of God. Let's read. Hallelujah. I want to read that ninth verse one more time. First Peter 2, 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, in which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now. Somebody shout now. Have obtained mercy. Notice what he says It's effective warriors. I'm going to have to do something with my flesh and I'm going to have to remember that this world is not my home. Dearly, beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which do what? Which do what? They warn against my soul. They warn against your soul. Lust, lust, lust in any form, any fashion. Hallelujah. Remember now, we got on this imaginary shelf affections and lust. I'm going to pull lust off there and put it right here. Hallelujah. Let's read, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pick it up right there. 12. Tell having your converse, First Peter 2 and verse 12. Read. Having your conversation of honest among the Gentiles. My what, church? He talking about represent now. He talking about us representing Jesus Christ. I, oh my God. I ain't gonna ask that question. I started to ask a question. How many y'all honest? I ain't gonna ask that. How many y'all out there honest? Amen. Praise God. Read, son. Give me that 12 first. Read. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. Read. That whereas they speak against you as evildoers. That's what, church? As evildoers. They may by your good words. By my what? By your what? Well, my good work, huh? Ephesians 2 and 10. Hallelujah. He ordained us to good works. Read. Which they shall behold, glorify God in the in, day of visitation. Now notice that day of visitation now. Notice that day of visitation now. Hallelujah. That day of visitation. Hallelujah. Romans 13. Let's move. Romans 13 and verse 12. 
Hallelujah. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Notice now. Notice he's talking to saints about putting away the things that, that, that don't honor Jesus Christ. The things that have our... Y'all look this way here. Sometimes when we're going through this life, certain things coming up, attach themselves to us. Certain people coming, attach themselves to us. Look out, bro, Willie. People don't know you until they need something. You see what I'm saying. Let's read, saints. Let's read Romans 13 and 12. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Boy, that get me. That get, hey, when I first got saved and I read that about armor of light, my God, I got to thinking about them Roman soldiers. Hallelujah. In Ephesians 6, Paul the apostle, no doubt, was looking at one of them Roman soldiers. And the Holy Ghost quickened his mind and said, praise God. You, you know, that pistol belt, the loins, girded about with truth. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, let's read, brothers. Let's read. Let us walk honestly. There it is again. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness. And there's more than one way to be drunk. You can be drunk off the cares of this world. But notice what our text say. Our text in 2 Timothy say, No man in that, in that ward will entangle himself with the affairs of this life. Why? That he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier of Jesus Christ. Let's read, brothers and sisters. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering, that means un unbridled lust, and wantonness, that also means unbridled lust, not in strife and envy. Y'all look this way here. He's talking to saints. How they live and operate among other saints. I'm told not to go beyond and defraud my brother. Look out, look out. Let's read, brothers and sisters. Not in strife and envy, but notice. Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put on his mind by putting on his word. Operating in his word. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's read. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And what? Make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust. To do what? And the only way I'm going to do that, I got to do Romans 12 and verse 1. Amen. To present my body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is my reasonable service. And the only way I can present my body, I got to take the mind of Christ and let it operate in me, Sister Collins. Let him operate in me now. Don't be conformed to this world. Don't let the world change you, but you transform them around you with a transformed life. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And this is the only place where he talks about us proving God's will. That we may prove that good and acceptable and perfect W-I-L-L, -L, Sister Jewel. Not W-I-L-L-S. You know, people, they circumvent God's word to try to make allowances for what they do and what others do. God got a permissive will. God ain't got but one will, and it's this B-I-B-L-E. Hallelujah. And he ain't going to accept nothing less from us. Hallelujah. All right. Y'all there? Y'all in Romans? Pick it up in that ninth verse. Romans 12 and 9. Somebody, anybody, I, I guess. Romans it. 12 and 9. Read. Let love be without dissimulation. Hallelujah. Abhor that which. Hate that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Now here again, we're dealing with being a good soldier, Jesus Christ. And these things, brothers and sisters, is what we better be practicing. Read, son. Be kindly affectionate one to another. What did you say? Be kindly affectionate one to another Read with it. brotherly love. With what? Brotherly love. Read it. In honor, preferring one another. Preferring one another. Not slow. Looking out for one another. Putting the needs of others when they're in trouble above your needs. Show enough. Boy, this thing is a hard road to hold this morning, ain't it? Huh? Read, son. Not slothful in business. Not, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Y'all look this way here. You know, one thing my family know, <laughs> I like to be on time. 
on every job I ever worked on. I, I, the only way I showed up late, I had a flat or something. I like to get there ahead of time. You, you see what I'm saying? When it talks about us being slothful, it means that we wait to the last minute to do what we do. And sure enough, when you get in a crunch, you're going to forget something. Been there, done that. And when I did that, that taught me a lesson, Sister Jewel. That taught me a lesson. On my job, I get there sometimes. Well, before I, I retired, I'd be there four or five hours ahead of time so I can get so I can wrap back in my car and sleep and then set the alarm so I can get them go clock in. But any other job, I make sure I got about 20 minutes to get there so I can catch my breath. Hallelujah. Now, this is what I'm saying over here. We cannot be slothful in our prayer life, in fasting and praying, in, in, in studying God's word and obeying God's word. We cannot be slack. We can't afford it. So sure enough. Read, son. Not slothful in business, fervent in the spirit. Fervent in the spirit. So well, amen now. Fervent in the spirit, brothers and sisters, mean that I'm not going to do what God tell me whenever I get up. It's round to it. I do it when I feel led. I hear you. Read. Serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope. Notice, fervent in spirit is doing what? Serving the Lord. Read. Rejoicing in hope. Yes. Patient in tribulation. Talking about, talking about warriors now. Talking about holy warriors. Talking about good soldiers. This is why, how we become what God want us to be. In this warfare that he placed us. This is how we deal. This is how we live. This is how we act. This is how we go back and forth. In and out. Without the devil attaching something to us. Read son. Continuing instant in prayer. Yeah. Yes. My God. Instant in prayer. I, I don't wait till uh, we get on the prayer line. I don't wait until I get among the crowd. My time is spent talking to God. Keeping that constant communication, them lines open. So he can tell me what he want me to do and then I can do what he called me to do. I'm the vessel. I want to be a vessel of honor. Amen. Now, I don't just want to be in God's house. I want to be a vessel of honor where God can be pleased to use me. It's God that work in you and me to do his his will, the good pleasure. Read, son. Distributing to the necessity of saints. My God, look at that. Read. Giving to hospitality. Giving to hospitality. Bless them which persecute now, you. Now, brothers and sisters, and we can't do this in the flesh. Your, your flesh won't stand for that. Show sure enough. You get mad. How do you get angry? And then the devil start. he really show sure enough coming in on you. Now, instead of selling your spirit and saying, mm-mm, you know what I choose? I got a choice. I can forgive or I can hold a grudge. I can forgive and let it go or I can try to get back at somebody. Y'all ain't talking to me. Read, son. Bless them which persecute you. Bless, bless them that persecute you. And curse not. And bless and curse. Now notice that word is in there twice. Bless. Read. Rejoice with them that do rejoice. Yes. And weep with them that weep. Yes. Now here's what I want right here. Read, son. That's 16 verse. Read. Be of the same mind. Be of the what church? One. Towards another. One. Towards a. Read. Mind, not high things. Lord, if you notice how that keeps coming up, brothers and sisters, about your mind. He's dealing with people that's got the mind of Christ. But they didn't know how to operate it until he wrote them through the Holy Ghost and told them your mindset before you got saved, you put that down. You may have been selfish before God saved you, but you get out of your flesh and you look on the things of others. You help the saints. Read, son. But condescend to men of low estate. Lord have mercy. You know that need to be etched in the minds of everybody leading the nomination. Sometimes we be so high up there until we talk over people's head. And not only that, but we act and react according to how people in the upper echelon can bless us. Read that book. Be not wise in your own conceit. That is right there. You conceited. You got respect the person. Read. Recompense. Hey, if you're here, check it off. Read. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Lord have mercy. Read it. Provide things honest in the There's sight of that all word. Men. So far, we done read that word honest three times in different verses. Read, son. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Read. 
Dearly beloved, avenge Dearly not beloved, yourself. Avenge not yourself, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, said the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink, for in doing so thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Look this way here. I told y'all on the, on the uh, when we was, amen, in one of the conferences, the, the, the prayer line conference, or whatever the case may be. This is not for you to pray for God to judge them. He's talking about you praying, doing good to them, trying to win them. Y'all with me this morning? And when you do good to your enemies, when you do good to people that, that wrong you, amen, praise the Lord, then they begin to have second thoughts and then God can work with their conscience. God can work with their conscience. And then if he can get in their conscience, brothers and sisters, you better know, he'll bring their pride to their knees. He's the one that changed hearts. Hallelujah. And showing up the, the very clear and present way that I can, I can represent Jesus Christ is to do this. Why? He gave me an example on the cross. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Well, thank God there was other saints that went that same right. Stephen, when they stoned Stephen, he said, Father, lay not this to their charge. Hallelujah. So it's in there more than one time for us to obey it. Read on. 1221. Be not overcome of evil, Die. but overcome evil with good. Do what? Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Last verse, saints. Last verse. Second Corinthians, the sixth chapter. And the first verse, we are workers together. We then, first, second Corinthians 6 and 1, we then as workers together with him. We're what? We working with him. Remember now, in Philippians, he's working in us, but we're allowing him by yielding to him, so we are actually partners in this thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's using me as a vessel of honor to do his will. Amen. Y'all with me this morning? Let's read. We then as workers together with him beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. Why? For he said, I have heard thee in the time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Notice, notice this third verse. Give no offense in anything. Why? That the ministry be not blamed. Now, you know, if we would guard the ministry of Jesus Christ by living for him, the devil ain't got, he wouldn't have nothing to point out at us and say, see, I told you they wasn't what they said they are. That he would have no avenue to bring shame on the God's, God's church. No kind of avenue. We are, made, we are ordained to live holy. We are ordained to live right. We are ordained to be lights in this world. And there's a lot of forces against us trying to snuff out our light. And trying to get us a pull, but pull us back over there. Where he, was, where he can control us. Hallelujah. Then you lose your testimony. And then everybody that was thinking about coming this way by watching your life, you lose them too. Let's read, brothers and sisters. Verse 3 again. Give no offense in anything that the minister be not blamed. But in all things are proven ourselves as ministers of God. And I'm going to put in there saints of God. Notice. Notice about this good soldier now. Notice about us in this warfare. We represent. Amen. Notice now, verse 4. But in all things are proving ourselves as the ministers of God. In what? In much patience. Uh huh. In afflictions. In necessities. In distresses. In stripes. They beat us. In imprisonment. Always in prison. In torments. Uh huh. In labors. In watchings. In fastings. By pureness. By knowledge. Long suffering. By kindness. The Holy Ghost, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, real true love that ain't fake, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left. Let's read. By honor and yet people dishonor us. By evil report, they put out evil report and good report. As deceivers and yet true, as unknown yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chasing and not kill, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, and having as having nothing and yet possessing all things. 
brothers and sisters, we're in a world now that have, that have given us the mentality to get without relying on Jesus Christ for everything we need. This is all he's saying. It don't make no difference what's going on in the outward appearance. It may look like I'm down, but I know, I, I, amen, I'm never down. Y'all look this way here. I ain't up all the time, but I'm never down. If I'm down, that means I can't get up. No, sir. He, I may buckle my knees, but it's only to go down and pray. Amen. Now, nah, sure enough, I never surrender. Amen. Hallelujah. I never surrender. Y'all.